all right afternoon fellas uh i forgot i had this easy up you can see it here uh, i forgot i had that and i'm out here sweating like crazy and the sun is just shining bright today i forgot i had it uh anyway make me a temporary shelter to do a little uh work this morning this afternoon so um like i said one of the other videos i uh, ordered the andrews the f100 performance uh rack and pinion adapter kit we're going to put the uh 2015 and up mustang electric steering rack in this thing um i've got the uh i ended up with a 2018 model for 19 inch wheels that had 7,000 miles on it for like 380 bucks so uh andrew and his kit has got uh, all the new wiring all the bolts to mount it with uh we're gonna get started on on that here here in just a few seconds um like I say everything's back together this is still stock crown vic other than i've got the uh, coil over shocks from from andrew's place there too um super nice guy to work with if you get a chance to um i've got the coil overs with 750 pound springs because of the uh, godzilla motor is quite heavy i've got a uh, john deere 2830 a 2038r it'll pick up about 1200 pounds and i couldn't pick up the entire pallet with the transmission and everything on it of course it's got it strung out there a little long but i could not pick the whole thing up i had to either had to have help lifting it or had to just kind of drag the pallet along so i've got that setting back here uh that uh i got the outcast motor mounts and everything for it we're going to try putting that in and I'm making a new cross member and everything for it uh here later i don't know if i'll get to it today or not but uh today's objective is to get the steering rack done uh we'll get on it so We'll get you on the time lapse. If I got anything super important, I'll try to include that in the video and we'll catch you later. okay got the uh tie rods off there took a little bit of time but not too bad so next thing is uh we're going to remove that bolt the nut and then the stud also and then uh right in there there's another one it's kind of hard to see on camera we're going to pull them out take the studs out and then we're going to put the two shiny bolts back in its place and with the bracket on it and then that will allow us to drill for the gold bolt there in the pack that allow us to drill the hole in the center for the last piece uh, he wanted some additional uh support there so we're gonna go ahead and do that be back in a few So if you do have to take, if you're changing this out, and if you haven't cut the uh, the Crown Vic swap, um, if you haven't cut them bolts down to make them the right length, um, exact the right length, those I haven't cut yet, and they will need to be removed up until we get uh, until we get this thing apart the rest of the way. So looks like the rack's ready to come off. I got the bolts came out pretty easy for the nuts come off uh had to hammer on the left one pretty hard uh took a little longer than i thought i didn't think it was going to come off and it did not break loose in the uh the stud did not come loose so i'm afraid that's going to be getting the studs out of there may be a chore may have to have a little heat 
propane torch or uh, something to help heat that up to get that loose. They're, they're probably locked tight it in there. So we'll pull the rack here. Set that down through there out of the way. And we're ready to, now you can see where the studs are that needs to come out. They do have a very small hex on the end of them, so we'll give that a whirl. I don't think there's any kind of nut or anything on the back side. I'll double check that and uh, make sure there's nothing there. Doesn't feel like there is. No, no kind of gap or anything. So I'm gonna guess that they're Loctited in there and those might be fun. So I'm gonna get them off and uh, if all else fails, I'll get a small pipe wrench and we'll get them out of there one way or another. I'm gonna try to get an impact and socket on them in some heat and of course some crow oil and uh, see if they'll come apart. So, all right, catching a few. Okay, so I've looked a little bit for an eight millimeter. That's what that end is there on the end of the stud right here. It's eight millimeter, six point socket, and then a three H drive. And without really digging through a whole bunch of stuff, I don't quite have one. So I've come up with a new plan. We're gonna run the original big nut back up on it and I'm gonna take this pair of ice grips and I'm gonna destroy the threads and permanently lock it on there so we're throwing it away anyway. While I get all that ready, I'm gonna heat the thing up with the map gas. I've got it, found it. And uh, I'm gonna heat it up there real hot and see if, uh, see if we can get that one out. Uh, the other one I think might come out easier just to do the, to the fact of all the oil and grease that was already on it. So I'm gonna start the heat first and uh, see how it goes from there. There we go. We're gonna lay it in there now. That'll start the heating process. Find the original nut here. We'll run it, run it back in.
must be getting pretty warm. The uh, took all the mylock out of it there. Already. Well, a little bit of heat must have made a huge difference because it doesn't come loose. We'll see if we can run that out just with that little bit of mess on the threads. touch them and that's all it takes. That ought to booger him up, man. Ice grips on there and I'll take her out. It's hard to fool with it. Sometimes trying to make it easier makes it harder. Move you guys over out of the way just a little bit. See if it'll come out back. still got good threads in the hole luckily that done the trick all right we'll uh see if the other one will break loose and see if it'll come out of there I'll reset you guys up over here all right well it looks like that should do it Go ahead and stick a nut on there just in case. 
Nothing else I'll weld it on there one before I have to do anything else. That way you got something, you know, to get a hold of if you need it to be. came loose too so that's a good thing I, was, I didn't think we was going to get them loose so Looks like that's turning pretty good. We got enough buggered up threads on the end. We should be able to get it out of there. Got it out of there. We'll set the bracket up there and see how it goes. Looks like that bracket's made to set right there. From watching the videos and stuff. Okay. Looks like the brake lines hold it down there just a little. It's been smashed down, which you're probably not going to use them anyway, so Give us our our spot to uh, drill the third hole. Put the bolt and the nut in through that square hole in the middle. Get this stuff opened up here. Okay, we got the uh, we got the bracket in. The studs are out. Um, gonna go fetch a uh, half inch drill bit to put that last bolt in that's sitting just on the edge of the camera's view. That gold bolt there on the frame rail on the driver's side. Gonna go get a half inch drill bit, drill the hole up in it, and down here in the front. There is that hole. We're going to drill up into there wherever he's got the hole at in the bottom. Um, then uh, we'll drill that hole in. We'll sneak back in there and put the nut and the washer in, tighten it down, tighten the two end ones down, and the conversion bracket's ready. All right, we'll be back in just a few.
So just one thing in this kit I want to mention. He sends all of these nice lock nuts that are the crimped style lock nuts. And they came with the shocks. They came uh, on the rear shocks, coilovers and stuff. And I haven't used any of them because all of my stuff I'm doing is test fitting, installing. I'm not permanently affixing anything until I get the frame coated and cleaned and everything is completely done. Then I want to disassemble everything, clean everything, pressure wash, sandblast, whatever needs done to it. That's what I'm going to be doing next. So, uh, I got to order some new cab mounts. I got to go get a windshield put in the thing. So, so way when I get the steering column and stuff in, it won't be, uh, getting all wet and stuff. So, uh, I've got a little bit of work left to do, but that's why I'm trying to save all these in one particular spot and that way I've got them for later. Okay, here's the, uh, I think it was a, pretty sure it's 2018 with the 19 inch wheels, rack and pinion. Uh, it come out, it's pretty clean. I mean, it ain't super clean to be only 7,000 miles, but it does look pretty good. We're gonna try to get that thing put up in there and show you guys along the way. Sorry, tripod's not wanting to stand. There we go. That ought to do it. Yeah, I'll get it laid down there and got the bolts down there we'll try to get it in there and see how it goes um, now this rack and pinion at the end over here right there you got to take those off I haven't done it yet we want to take those off we got to cut an inch the threads off of there and it came with uh, new tie rods and everything I still got them in the shop that are re-drilled and tapped to go back on it that fits the knuckles correctly I've got those, um, got the new tie rods and ends and everything to go in there. So, all right, well, I'm gonna get to it here. keep quiet enough tools in the way I can't get nothing done. Time I get everything under here. We'll see if I got my uh, stabilizer bar in the right place or not. The rack's heavier than you think it is. It ain't very heavy until you go to put it up in somewhere. Looks like we're hitting just a little. hoping it would make it without having to take it apart. Let's try it on the other side there just a little bit. No. One side fits and the other don't, so. That's okay. I'm gonna set her back down here. We'll take the sway bar loose. It'll definitely clear once it's together. Got the 916s done. Bolt the uh, the 
the sway bar mounts, uh, the ones I've mount, done put on and welded in place. So, one mount them real quick, get them out of the way. Then we'll try it again. Be able to get away with just, just the one side unmounted. Let me pull it up here crooked. Maybe not. And of course, it's down out of the way too far. <clears throat> Grab this quick grip clamp and hold it up here out of the way just to a little bit out of the way and see how that goes. Just had to pull it out a little bit. All right. That fit really nice. Luckily, the quick grip held on there just barely on the edge, but we had her. So that, uh, that slid in the bracket really good. I get some bolts in it. See if I can remount the uh, sway bar, get it all put back together, and see how it goes. I'm gonna set you guys up on the time lapse for that part. Okay, fellas, uh, got the rack in there as you've seen. The sway bar will not mount back up. I put it about an inch out from what I thought it was gonna need farther forward because I knew it needed that to clear this big, the power steering brain. Um, you can see those two tabs, right? This one and that one. Those stick out about three eighths of an inch, and that's about what I'm missing. I'm only missing about a quarter of an inch from going back up and clearance in that. So I've got my M12 cutoff tool. Uh, those are just going to have to disappear. So 
not what I wanted to do by far, but that's just the way it is, you know, not knowing how, how far forward. So if anybody is going to mount this rack and you're doing a Crown Vic swap, you should stay at least an inch and a half far, an inch and a half forward uh, when you're mounting that the sway bar. Uh, inch is not enough. So, all right. Well, I'm gonna cut these off and uh, see if we can get the sway bar mounted back up. I'm gonna cut them off just past the handle or off just past the eyelet. This little tool. It, it does okay. I don't know how well we're doing this aluminum, but it does pretty good. May have to get a different plan. It's just right on the edge of being there. There was a wasper down there on my toe. Kill that sucker. Got him. For someone that's allergic to bees, that's bad. Break that off and dress it up with the. Uh... I'm gonna dress it up with the die grinder. All right, we'll catch you in a few. Okay, so don't mind the mess. I still haven't cleaned it up all the way. But there's the two tabs. Uh, pretty well gone. I shaped them back to the case. Uh, all freehanded with the grinder, or the angle grinder and a carbide bit. I didn't know. I know I've always had problems with uh, the carbide bits galling and filling full of aluminum. So I slowed the grinder down, kept the cool kind of tool, uh, the cool the tool kind of cool i get it right in a minute sorry uh and the thing cut beautiful shavings just poured off of it during uh our whole machining stuff there where we've learned on machining parts and uh, it's all about surface speed so I slowed the surface speed of the tool down cut it all dry no more galding it didn't fill the tool and stay packed it uh just actually just cut it worked out really good. So I think I've got my clearance that I need. We'll set you back up on the tripod. And we'll go from there and see about uh, putting this back together now. Bye.
Okay. There's some aggravating news. Even though uh, I trimmed them little tabs all up, got it looking halfway good, uh, still ain't gonna fit. So I'm gonna have to cut my mounts off the frame, move that forward. That'd be another day. I'm just gonna hold it up with the quick grip there. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish up the uh, the tie rod install. We'll go ahead and get that cut off of, uh, cut the tie rod ends off about an inch off of the threads. I will go back and review his video, so don't take my word for it until I get to review it, but I'm pretty sure they said to take an inch off. I'm gonna go check that out and uh, I'll be back with you.